Building a kite definitely required more skill than we thought. It uh, involved um, thinking not only about the aesthetics of a kite, but also the, the mechanics and the aerodynamics of how a kite works. Anne and I both consider ourselves craft people, and I think we're pretty good. And it wasn't until we were really learning how to build this kite that we realized just how incredibly complex it is to get the bamboo the, the exact thinness that it needed to be and to prepare it the right way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to heat the bamboo over fire to get it to take form and shape. And we would watch the master Ha who we worked with do it, and he would do it in seconds. And it would take us days. There's, there's a great photo of us, and it's just we're surrounded by just this massive bamboo of all the trials we made. And it, it was really eye-opening and really humbling. Uh, it was a really humbling experience. We started with a simple four-frame structure kite, bamboo structure kite, and then we progressed to a more complex structure called a, sw a swallow kite. It's, I almost thought of it like evolution, to see these kites being built over a period of time. Each generation would add or change a slight degree. Um, for example, there's these parts of the wing, these sort of wing ornaments that mimic a shoulder on a bird, and you see them progress over time, and now they're at this point where they are just like, they're, they're precise, they have to be right. What, what excited me being there was, was working with Master Ha. I mean, he, he's a fourth generation kite builder, and he learned from his grandfather, and, and seeing him work uh, was really just incredible, and being able to be part of that process of having a one-on-one -on -one with him uh, was really, for me, the, the highlight of the trip. Also seeing other artisans while we were in China, both working in the traditional arts as well as contemporary artists. We went to the 798 district in China and saw a lot of the contemporary work, a lot of public art, a lot of um, really charged work that I, I didn't know was really even being mm -hmm. made and mm -hmm. it was really kind of mind-blowing to see coming out of uh, Beijing. A reason for going to China was really to learn the kites for our University of Michigan Kite Festival this on September 25th of this year. It's really turned into more than that for both Matt and myself in terms of integrating it into our own work, our skills we learn, as well as in our classes. I plan on integrating working with bamboo in my art and design classes in the fall. And I also plan to work with the, the framing in my own sculptural work. We are also working with students across campus, including Europe, the University Research Opportunity Program students, and residents in the Living Arts Residence Hall on North Campus. So we're really excited to see this reach a large group of students across campus. Even outside of the university, we're hoping that this festival reaches uh, a community larger than just the University of Michigan. And then we're also, in addition, bringing back Master Ha from China to come the week prior to the, the festival to do workshops and show students and people alike just to how to build these traditional Chinese kites.